Hello and welcome to this pit stop for The Boldest, a game designed by Sophia Wagner, published by Spielweiss and Stronghold Games. In The Boldest, the King's forces have uncovered the Iron Valley. And now on each of five or six days, player count dependent, the King is going to arrange expeditions into the valley, allowing the players to defeat the monsters, get the items, capture the artifacts and score the most points as indicated on these cards. Now there are three expeditions each day and I said there are five or six player count dependent and for each of those expeditions players are going to take a hand of cards and they're going to organize them by class on for one two and three for the three expeditions they're going to do this behind a the screen there are five different class of cards in the game and only one class can be put in any one slot for example I've put warriors here what you can do is use the fifth one the pets to go with any other slot but you cannot mix together the different character types other than that once everyone has made their planning, they're going to take their screens away. And then we're going to check and see who has got the most powerful of each class for each of the expeditions. Now the classes go in a particular order. And the first thing we're going to check is who's got the strongest warriors for the first expedition. Now, we check to see the class icons in the top left hand corner off the cards. And whoever's got the most is going to be able to go on the expedition. The top card that you lay down is your leader, and if they have any extra effects, in this case it is two extra class icons, they will be added to your expedition strength. In this case, myself here as the blue player, with the cats helping out, have been the strongest warrior. That means I'm going to get the first chance to go in the forest, but each of the different classes has got a specific power. For warriors, they can only claim either monsters, these orange cards, or items, these blue ones, from the bottom row. Now, a monster without anything here is fine and you can defeat it, although obviously this one's too far up. In order to defeat monsters that got particular icons, you must have items with you. In this case, I have got this hammer to go for this one. So I can use my item, flip it over. It's no longer going to score me the point, but I will take this monster. And this is now going to score me 11 points at the end of the game. Because I was successful, the king is very happy with me. He takes my leader into his own tent to join the revelries. But the rest of the crew are also very happy and they are going to go to the beer tent and they will be face down and they're going to take a day to recover from their hangover and they won't be available for me to go on the expedition the next day. They won't be in their bunk. Now these guys over here, they didn't get to go on the expedition. In a four or five player game, two parties of each class get to go on each expedition. Let's say they didn't make it. These will go back in the bunk and they will be available next time. And also, as compensation, they get to draw the top card of the Adventurer deck, which will add to their deck and make them more powerful. Now, the next class to go into the forest are the Technicians. They come with the Spanners, and when they go in there, they can take either an Artifact or an Item card, again from the bottom row, but they have to have the correct items. I couldn't take this one because I don't have a chainsaw, but maybe I could take this item, lining myself up for later, or I could have taken that for more points. The next class to go into the forest are the Hunters. Now, when it comes to the hunters, they get to take one weapon, one artifact and one creature, but only from one column. So they choose any of them and they have to have this hunter symbol on there. So in this case, I could take each of these three. They're in the same column and they all have the correct symbol on there. Again, scoring me points or possibly items for use later on in the game. The last cast is how you're going to build up your deck of heroes. And those are the cooks. Now, when you win with the cooks, you get to go down here to this adventurer area and you get to take more adventurers and they'll go directly into your bunk beds there and they'll be available to you on the next turn. And when you come down here, they have various effects. Now, you got these with the extra class symbols, which we looked at, which just makes your exposition more powerful. You've got water buffalo, which are very good pets, will add two to any of your other sources. You've got some heroes who carry their own items, so you don't need to flip anything over. You've also got some heroes will let you take extra cards when you go on a hunt or a hunter that will go across a row rather than up a column. Or this guy here, when you take a monster, you can also take an adjacent artifact. This one here is going to let you kill a monster and an adjacent monster and so on and so forth. And they will go into your deck and build you up to help you go on the expeditions in order to collect the best things from the Iron Valley to please the king. If ever there's a tie in any of these for terms of power, it's broken along here. And let's say that blue won the tie break against yellow. Blue would then shift over to the right again and will be last for tiebreak order until someone else takes it and moves themselves over to the right. After you've played the five or six rounds, player number dependent, you're going to add up all the points which are in your deck from items you used. They get discarded. You don't get to use those again. And whoever has scored the most points is going to be the winner of the boldest. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos of this, check out the Game Pit YouTube channel. For more in-depth coverage of gaming, please check out the Game Pit Podcast. Thank you.